Therapy Chat Podcast, Episode 63. This is the Therapy Chat Podcast. The information shared in this podcast is not a substitute for seeking help from a licensed mental health professional. And now, here's Laura Reagan, LCSWC, with today's episode. Hi, welcome back to Therapy Chat. So it's December 7th, 2016, and with the holidays approaching, my schedule of episodes is going to be a little bit off from the alternating weeks with the trauma episodes and the integrative mental health episodes. This week, I'm going to veer off course a little bit and follow up with you about the saga of my desire to spend time with horses. So I want to tell you about what happened just a little bit over a week ago when I finally went out there and took my first horse riding lesson. If you read my blog, you already know about this, but I wanted to share it with you as well because I Not everyone who listens to the podcast reads the blog and vice versa. But I call this doing hard things. So I don't know if you've heard Glennon Doyle Melton, the author of Love Warrior and Carry On Warrior, say we can do hard things. But it was a hard thing for me the day that I had my first horse riding lesson. So we can do hard things. I know I can do hard things, or I think I can. So that day, it was something that may not seem huge to other people, but it was really new and challenging for me. Fulfilling a promise I made to myself and to you, my listeners of Therapy Chat, just, you know, all of you thousands of people who are tuning in, talk about accountability. I took my 45-year-old body, which had not been on the back of a horse for 32 years, and even then when I was 13, my experience was limited to two or three times I rode a horse while someone held on to the reins and walked along with it, slow. (laughs) So I had my first horseback riding lesson, my first one ever. It was clear to me that the people at the barn and at the shop where I bought my helmet right before my lesson expected that I had some kind of experience on a horse when they were talking to me. I could tell because they kept saying, so you're coming back to riding after a long break? I was like, no, I'm an absolute total beginner. I've never done it at all. They were like, since you were little. I was like, no, ever. (laughs) So from this experience, of course, I realized that I like knowing, and I'll be honest, I hated how it felt to admit that I didn't know anything about horsemanship. I realized more and more as I continue my journey of growth and exploration of myself and who I am and how I got here, I'm realizing that I really do like knowing. Not knowing feels totally uncomfortable to me. And at this stage of my life, I feel like I know in most situations. Maybe it's because I'm a parent and I've become comfortable in that bossy know-it-all role. Or maybe I don't push myself out of my comfort zone often enough. Although I do challenge myself fairly often. In fact, when I was talking to my husband about this experience, he noted that he thinks it's easy for me to do new things, but not really. And recent experiences of stepping into unfamiliar territory have reminded me or I've reluctantly begun to accept that it's okay to be a beginner, but I won't lie. I don't like that feeling. I strongly dislike it. And I noticed that this seems like a metaphor for what it must be like for my clients to come to therapy and what it's been like for me to go to therapy. It's vulnerable and vulnerable is an understatement. Vulnerability makes my skin crawl. Anyone who's with me? 
I don't think many of us like that feeling. But I know that's how we grow. That's why I keep pushing myself. The more I know as a therapist, the harder it is for me to be the one on the couch. Yet I also know I'll be my best self as a therapist when I continue exploring the parts of myself that I don't really enjoy looking into. Shocker. (laughs) For all of us, those parts are there, and they're either in the shadows where we don't see them as they're calling all the shots, or they are in our conscious awareness and we can manage them more effectively. And probably somewhere in between much of the time. If you want to know more about the shadow, the shadow parts of ourselves, you can listen back to episodes 38, 40, and 42, where I interviewed first Rini Beck, LMFT, and then Lourdes Viado, LMFT, and then Carrie Nola, who is a licensed mental health counselor and therapist coach, who all of them speak about the shadow. I thought that all three of those interviews were fascinating. And then I talked more about this shadow in terms of what is going on with Don Draper on Mad Men, why that character acts the way he does. And that is episode 54. And in episode 53, I talked more about secrecy, shame, and the shadow. So links to all of those are in the show notes for this episode, which is also the blog post that I wrote about it. So when I went to my first horseback riding lesson, I was struggling with not knowing, being a beginner. Pretending I don't feel that way, that it's not uncomfortable or avoiding noticing the overwhelming sense of wanting to know might seem easier, and I certainly don't need to tell you about it or to write about it on my blog. I'd rather play it cool. I could just have this private experience and not say anything about it, but I'm sharing it here because I hope it will help you sit with that discomfort when it comes up in your life, as it inevitably does. We can turn towards the discomfort, feel it, or we can turn away from it avoidance. I'll be honest again, it's much more fun and interesting from my perspective for me to sit back and tell you how much I know about what you might want to try doing differently so you can feel better in your life. I enjoy that more than talking about what I don't like about my life. But what I really know all comes from my own experiences of struggling and figuring stuff out the hard way. And yes, I do have a lot of training and experience, but if I couldn't apply these lessons to my own life, something would be missing. So showing you that I struggle too is a way I hope to help. So how did I end up on the back of a very large horse that day? I had been talking about wanting to learn horsemanship. I'd been talking about it for more than 10 years. I talked about it in a previous blog and therapy chat episode. You may have heard. Hence the reason why I recorded this follow-up episode, because I talked about it in episode 55, where I had a beautiful experience with horses. And then in episode 56, I talked with Charlotte Heiler Easley about how she uses equine-assisted psychotherapy to help survivors of trauma. And then in episode 57, I talked about how children are like horses. So horses, 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 my current obsession. So I'd been telling myself that all I needed to do for getting started with horseback riding is sign up and get started, pay the money and go. And that's true. So finally this year I signed up and I finally got started just a bit over a week ago and spoiler alert, it wasn't all rainbows and butterflies. I was scared. I was nervous. I struggled with not knowing. I found myself using self-deprecation, a defense mechanism, while I was purchasing a helmet at the saddlery. And then when I was learning how to groom and tack at the equestrian center, I was 
self-deprecating all over the place. That's kind of an old bad habit that I really don't practice much anymore, except for maybe when I'm feeling extremely uncomfortable like that day. And so I was learning how to groom and tack, which I probably won't remember and I'll have to relearn next time. And I was judging myself pretty harshly. I told myself, my body isn't able to do this, even while I know that my body is strong. I kept telling myself, I'm too big for this, too tall, not slim enough. Maybe the people who ride are slim because it's great exercise. Maybe I will become slimmer too. Maybe I won't. Maybe they aren't all slim. Maybe it doesn't matter. A horse weighs over 1,000 pounds, and this horse did not seem troubled or disturbed to have me on his back. He wasn't groaning at holding me up. I watched myself in the mirror, supposed to be checking my form, but judging my body, saying, Ew, do I look like that? Even while knowing my body is strong, my body can do this knowing I've never done this. I don't have muscle memory for this. I will learn this. I am strong. But I was judging, judging, judging my appearance, judging myself for judging myself. Seriously. So, I don't know if you've ever ridden a horse, but getting up on the horse was hard and scary. It was really high up. I had to climb on this little three-step stool to get up onto the horse, and I was afraid I wouldn't be able to mount the horse. I literally felt like I felt when I went skiing at age 13, and I fell down, and I didn't think I'd be able to get up. So I kind of just laid there. The instructor was telling me I could get up and telling me how to get up, and I just shut down. So there was a part of me that was afraid I was going to shut down again. It's not easy following verbal directions in that kind of situation when the animal you're trying to climb onto is moving and you can't really see where to place yourself. You don't trust yourself. Maybe I wasn't trusting the horse either. But I got up there. And by the way, getting down was even harder and I almost fell. But I didn't. And even if I did, so what? Even if I got hurt, I'll be okay. There is an element of trust to this, and I'm working on it. Trusting the horse and trusting myself, probably both. I lamented to my daughter after the lesson, telling her how hard it was, and she said, not everything is a therapeutic experience, Mom. (laughs) That may be true, but I'm convinced that this can be. And I was really struggling after the lesson, emotionally, way more than physically. So apparently, that is a therapeutic experience. When the lesson was over, I wanted to be like, this was so amazing. But I didn't feel like it was amazing. I had maybe five seconds during the whole experience when I was like, wow, I'm doing this. That was maybe the moment where I was mindfully present. Five seconds max. I also thought, does this horse like me? I'm grateful he hasn't tried to throw me off his back. Am I doing this right? That last thought, am I doing this right, occurred at least 20 times. I said it out loud maybe five times to the instructor, and I wanted to say it at least 100 times. And I was judging myself for feeling scared and unsure. I wondered how the horse and the instructor were judging me. Do you notice a theme? Judging, judging, judging. When I got in my car, I felt like maybe I wanted to quit. Maybe I couldn't do it. And I judged myself for feeling that way. Are you confused yet? Me too. I hated feeling like this vulnerable kid who doesn't know how to do things and doesn't believe in herself. But I allowed myself to feel that way instead of pretending it was different. I was telling anyone who would listen, my friend Anne, who I talked to after the lesson, my husband, my daughter, 
the saleswoman at the saddlery, the riding instructor, how hard it was, and how discouraged I felt. As I was telling them my feelings, I was judging myself for feeling that way. At home, I felt exhausted, bone tired, emotionally worn out, and physically worn out. I was looking forward to an Epsom salt bath. Has this ever happened to you in any situation? How often do you push yourself outside of your comfort zone? Do you like it? Answer, no. That's why it's outside of your comfort zone. So why don't I just quit this silly horsemanship idea? Well, I actually believe that I will get better at this. I believe that I will have the experience of learning how to do something new, overcoming my doubts, and it will result in not only a sense of mastery eventually, but also it will remind me that I can do hard things. I am strong. I'm stronger than I think I am, emotionally and physically. Cognitively, in my logical brain, I know this. The part of me that is a scared little girl is just one of my parts. There are also other parts of me that are confident. Somewhere in there, a part of me knows that this will be fun one day if I keep at it. Somewhere inside, I know that's true. Again, it's like therapy. You go through the hard parts because you know something better is on the other side. Or you believe it is. You hope it is. And it is. Something good will come from it. I realize therapy isn't all fun and games, but it's better than staying where you are, and what comes from the hard work is so beautiful, indescribably so. And you're permanently changed. You can never go back to who you were. As Thich Nhat Hanh says, no mud, no lotus. That is true of large and small experiences of discomfort over our lifetimes. And what's the alternative? So I'm going to treasure this experience of being so new at horsemanship. I'm going to try to enjoy this feeling of being a beginner. I'll remember that once I didn't know how to do this at all. One day I'll be on the back of a horse, galloping through a field, maybe even jumping. Who knows? Sky's the limit. I have a long life ahead of me and I'm going to do hard things even when I'm scared. I mean, I don't actually know how long my life will be, of course, because no one does. But in this moment, I did this hard thing, and I'm embracing that feeling in all of its glory, the good and the bad. I hope this will inspire you to push yourself outside of your comfort zone, too, because that is where the magic happens. That is where we grow. And that is really what life is all about, a journey towards self-actualization, whatever that means for each of us. It's going to be okay. I had my second lesson on Thursday, a few days after my first lesson. It went much better. It was still hard. It was still way outside of my comfort zone. I still didn't love it, but I believe that it's going to be fun when I get used to it. And so I'm going back again tomorrow. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Therapy Chat today. I hope it inspires you to do one thing outside of your comfort zone sometime this year, next year, one day. As always, please visit iTunes to leave a rating and review and subscribe so you can receive all the latest episodes as soon as they come out. Take care. Hey, this is Laura Reagan, LCSWC host of Therapy Chat. Listen, if you're a therapist who resonates with the idea of wanting to bring your best self into your work with clients, I wanted to tell you about a few ways that you can get support in showing up fully with your clients while having awareness of your own wounded places. We can't do our best work with clients if we're not self-aware. So I offer clinical supervision to Maryland social workers, whether students or 
newly licensed LGSWs who are working on clinical hours for independent licensure, or LCSWCs who want to get more specialized supervision in trauma work. So in my clinical consultation for any therapists, um, including counselors, MFTs, psychologists, or social workers, I help people work on showing up as your best self in your therapy sessions while taking care of your own wounded parts so you can effectively support your clients. I also specialize in helping you address the effects of traumatic stress exposure through vicarious trauma, secondary traumatic stress, compassion fatigue, burnout, whatever you want to call it. That is something that I've focused on quite a bit, and you can find more information on that by going to my website and clicking on For Professionals. We can do clinical consultation in person, or if you're outside of Maryland, we can do it online using a secure online platform. And if you're a trauma therapist seeking support for the effects of traumatic stress exposure and vicarious trauma, and you want support in community, sign up for information on joining the next cohort of my trauma therapist community. That includes monthly group clinical consultation in person or online, and a private Facebook group for keeping in touch in between sessions for less than the cost of individual clinical consultation with me. So I hope you'll be inspired to check out some of these resources. If nothing else, you can find a lot of information on that for professionals page about self-care for therapists and addressing, identifying, and preventing the effects of trauma exposure on us as therapists. So you can check that out at www.lauraregan.lcswc.com and then click on for professionals. Thanks so much. Thank you for listening to the therapy chat podcast with Laura Reagan, LCSWC. For more information, visit Laura's website at www.lauraregan.lcswc.com.